said, I mean, we've been planning this for a while. Uh, I think it's been about three, four years that we've not come to Kolkata for, for such an event. It was COVID and after that kind of went off. So, so look, thanks for coming. Uh, we are excited to be here talking to you. And, and, and the topic is also so pertinent for today's time, right? As there's just one thing which I hear all the time and that's AI. So we thought it will be worthwhile spending some time with all of you talking about what, in, in fact, demystifying what AI is, right? So even before I go into uh, the slides and AI and all those things, look, as we speak to our customers from our vantage point of, of you know, uh, speaking across verticals, right, whether it be enterprise, SMB, government, there are two themes which are coming out, right? two themes which are top of mind for everybody, right? Uh, one is security, cyber threats, that's big, right? And the second one is AI, right? So it's no more a buzzword, right? Both of them, I mean, these, these, are, these are real. So the way I'll structure the next 20 odd minutes and, and take it in that way, like, you know, uh, uh, this should be helpful to you when you have those conversations with your customers, right? Okay. So probably I'll start with, with security and then move on to AI, right? Uh, look, as you think of the PCs today, right? The digital real estate has become more complex right? It has become more distributed with the hybrid work. We do not have a perimeter in which all the devices are there and it has become much more complex, right? And if you think of it, the data in any of your devices is, is access to your privacy, right? I mean, think of the amount of data you are carrying in your, on your mobile today, right? And somebody gets access to that data, what is the kind, kind of information that he is getting access to, right? Your entire life. Right? And so it becomes important for individuals and companies alike to secure their endpoints. Right? So top of mind of any CSO that we speak to is, hey Microsoft, this is the scenario, what is the solution? Right? And obviously we do not have like a foolproof solution. So I thought it is worthwhile showing you some numbers, where the industry is, what are the things that you need to consider when you go and meet your customers? And is there a solution that Windows brings in? Right? Those are things that we will try to cover in the next 10 odd minutes before we go on to the AI, AI part of it. Right? It is everywhere. It is real. Right? It is all over the web. Right? Cyber attacks are everywhere. Right? So that is that's not, not new news to any of us. Right? Sorry. But let us look at some numbers, right? And at Microsoft, we do a lot of surveys, we love our numbers, so some numbers. 87 percent of the organizations we spoke to, right, have had at least one firmware attack in the last two years, 87 percent, okay? 52 percent of the enterprises said that, hey, they not only had a, an attack, but they also had revenue loss because of the attack, right? Now, these are staggering numbers, 52 percent, we are not talking about 10, 15 percent, right? 87, 52, right? Now, now the, our math says the cost of these cyber attacks globally is around 10 trillion, 10 trillion, <laughs> that is that's, that's, that's the GDP of a lot of com, uh, countries, you know? and growing at 15 percent year, year on year. So what they say is by 2025, this is going to be 25 trillion risk loss to the organizations, huge, right? One more data point, I was searching for the data point in the slide, is, which is not there, is post COVID, there were 1 billion URLs, phishing URLs created, 1 billion, billion phishing URLs created to ensure that these 87, 52 only keep growing up, right? It has become an industry in itself, right? Phishing and ransomware has become an industry in itself, right? And they are very sophisticated, 
right? Are we ready? Are our customers ready for that? Those kind of sophisticated attack? Probably not. And that's where uh, partners like you, companies like us, have to come together to give that solution to our customers, right? Do we have a solution? The the products you sell are the most important one, right? To, uh, 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 the uh, the solve to what 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 we are seeing as a as a risk, right? Some more numbers, okay? Modern devices. Now, now, if you look at India, India has the second largest device refresh opportunity globally. Now, when I say what is device uh, device refresh, devices which are four year plus in India are the second largest globally after US. Okay. Sixty-five percent of those devices are not even eligible for a Windows 11, right? Windows 11, you know, requires a lot of hardware specifications, right? TPM 2.2 and all those stuff, right? So, 65 percent of the devices sitting in these organizations are not even eligible for a Windows 11, right? And Windows, Windows 10 is going to be UL in two years time. So, so what will they do, right? So, so even otherwise, there are no patches coming in, there is no security, there are all unsecured threat areas for all these uh, threat actors to come in and attack, right? And in a way, this is the solution, right? So, 43 percent of the of the folks that we have spoken tell that, hey, security is top of their priority, right? 85 percent of the of the, of the folks that we have spoken also say, this, the first solution to this is modern devices. You got to have your chip, right? The laptop be secured first, right? There are multiple layers of security that we have got to take care of, but the first one definitely is the laptop, right? And obviously, 60 percent are hybrid and, and the perimeter is all over the place. As I said, threat only goes up. So, at Microsoft, the philosophy, uh, we, um, we take a zero trust uh, security principle. Now, zero trust security is started with Microsoft. Now, that has become a gold standard, right? So, we have got most of the companies follow, follow zero trust security uh, principle. Now, what is zero trust, right? Uh, verify explicitly. We verify anything which 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 comes in, right? Always, sorry, use least privilege access. Give only access, as much access as required, right? With our operating system, right? And always and always assume breach. We always assume that there is a smarter person who is going to attack our PC anytime, right? And that's how that's how we build our 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 software. And look, this has become a, a gold standard. Most of the organizations are now, are now going into it. But the difference is this, right? While a lot of people would, would be going into that zero trust uh, principle, but they do not have the endpoints that Microsoft has. Now, think of the PCs that are there in the world. Most of it is with Windows. Yeah, there is there's hardly anything on, on any other operating system, right? Now, that gives us the advantage of analyzing these data. Now, think of this complexity. Look at this, these numbers. These are staggering, right? 400 billion mails are analyzed, right? 1.2 billion devices get scanned each month by Microsoft, okay? 200 plus cloud consumers are looked at. 5 billion threats are detected every month, right? Now, these are the back end stuff which is happening to, to, to ensure that the endpoints are secure. And there are not too many organizations which have this scale because the endpoints out there are all on Microsoft, right? So, we get that advantage and partners who uh, like you who work with us get that advantage, right? Of, of selling a product which is, uh, which is helping the customers. I think this is my last slide on security uh, and this probably is the solution to it as of now? You've got now. This is this is a good good thematic representation of, of how how everything works, right? So it's it's from the hardware, from the chip. There's a layer, right? This these are layers of security that we need to ensure. If organizations need to secure their infrastructure, they need to secure all these layers, right? Right from your chip on the hardware to the
the operating system to the application on top of that operating system to the identity and, and to the cloud if they are going to the cloud, right? Each layer is important and if you don't secure any layer, breach can happen, right? And so as we as we thought of Windows 11 and this was obviously during the, 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 the COVID period that this product was, was envisaged and worked on, this was our principle at which, which we did that, that each layer needs to be secure, right? Uh, and and, and, and that's, that's how we've come out with this, this great product, Windows 11. I don't know how many of you have you are using it. Uh, plus, uh, please do use Windows 11. This is the security side of things that I'm speaking on, but it's an, it's, a, it's an awesome operating system to ensure that the employees are productive as well. There's so many features uh, which make uh, Windows 11 uh, one of the best operating systems yet that we've launched. So look, I think a lot of data, uh, a lot of, lot of stuff, but I think what, what I would, I would urge you all as you go to your, your customers, the top of the mind for them is security. Uh, as trusted partners to your customers, I think the solution to that uh, can be a lot. I'm, obviously Windows 11 as, as a Microsoft guy, I would say Windows 11, but, but please do think of the security landscape that we have today, right? Uh, in the country uh, and have those conversations with your customers. The others, uh, uh, other thing that we need to discuss today and that's the theme as well is future of work with AI or, or AI in general, right? Okay, so even before I get into that, how many of you have used ChatGPT or are using ChatGPT? Okay. Fair. We still have a lot of people who have not used, used ChatGPT, right? So this is, this is a, a note that I put out on LinkedIn a month back. This was not written by me. I'm not a great writer, okay, not a spontaneous writer. So I gave ChatGPT, hey ChatGPT, I did this event, this is the topics I spoke, can you give me an article? And this is what came out, right? Now that's the power of of, of chat GPT and AI, right? This is your buddy next to you, helping you be more productive, right? I saved so many hours. To me, if I have to write this much, I need need an hour, right? I have to think, I have to write. Here you go. Just give, give them context. But look, AI is not new. AI has existed for a long, long time, right? 1959 was when AI came into being. Right? Then it became machine learning. Right? We've been hearing of deep learning. They're all AI. Now think of your social media usage. Right? Your Facebook. You go to Facebook, you get recommendations. Right? How, how does that happen? It's all AI part. Right? They would have taken your information from somewhere, they did that analytics and told, hey, you know what, it location matches, you've got a common friend, this is where you have to engage, this is, this is the recommended list. How do you buy your stuff today online, right? Anything you buy online is all AI driven, right? You, you go and click on, on a site somewhere and then go to another website, you will have ads coming, targeted ads at you, right? Saying that, hey, these, these shoes that you serve there, these are the options, right? These are all AI, right? But what is then new in, why this hype about AI today, right? Now this is the most powerful AI which has come thus far. Right, and this is something called generative AI. Right uh, now, these are very powerful, la large language models, LLMs, as they call it. Right, so which have been built by a lot of companies. Obviously, you know, petabytes of data go into that. Which, if you give the right set of robust data, right, about you, about your organization, about my myself, the art, the, the article I wrote. Had ChatGPT known more about Vineet Nambudri, it would have been a much better output which would have come, right? So it's it's so generative AI is all about large language models coupled with robust data, which which helps you uh, scale anything, right? Scale anything, okay? And that's that's the generative AI that I was speaking of. 
let's let's roll a video before we go any further So you saw co-pilot in, in that in that video, right? So co-pilot is something which is going to come to all our Microsoft pro products going forward, right? So the office that you sell, the windows that you sell, everything will have an AI feature, uh, and that's what we call as co-pilot, right? Even the security products that we have will have those AI features. Okay, so we launched. Uh, our beta products with some of the organizations uh, six months back, uh, and this is this is the result, right? Lens card, Aditya Birla Capital, Paytm, Dabar, you name it, right? Uh, they've had use cases which have made them much more productive, right? Lens card leverages AI through the Power BI to improve efficiency and increase their sales, right? Aditya Birla Group saves productivity hours, right, by stream streamlining business process. So obviously end to end of an organization would be impacted with ai with the copilot that we launch right and so what happens if and this is going to be the the one that you've got to you got to think of right now there's going to be a phase wherein some organizations are going to adopt to this faster than others right? why should i take ai i mean Right? That's the first question which you will have, right? It's, it, it, I don't know how expensive it's going to be, but why should I move to AI? Now, this is the result, right? The front runners who adopt AI fast, right? Uh, and this is a study done by McKinsey, uh, would have obviously their top line and bottom line much better than the laggards that you see on the bottom, right? 100, and, 100 plus, 120 plus percentage growth across versus the laggards who will be like declining, right? So if there is one area that organizations should and definitely will, as we, as we are speaking to customers, we understand, invest in, in the next seven odd years, that's going to be products powered by AI, right? And who's leading that? With our 50 odd percentage stake in ChatGPT and the, and the integration that's happening to our product is Microsoft, right? Uh, so clearly the current answer to, to the AI uh, growth is, is Microsoft. So look, before I end, I, th I thought it's important uh, to look at some more numbers, right? So as you speak to your customers, uh, it'll be helpful, right? Uh, so, so this is a survey we had done, right? Uh, with around 30,000 odd, odd employees on the impact of AI. How will AI impact them, right? Uh, and clearly there are, there are three findings, right? Digital debt is costing us innovation, right? Uh, uh, there's a new alliance between AI and employee, 
uh, employees need AI aptitude, right? Uh, the, the other thing which comes up as you talk about AI is, hey, you know what, AI is going to take away jobs. That was something that we tried to explore in our survey, right? And that's not the fact, right? Uh, what needs, and, and this is the second point, right? It's going to be an alliance between AI and an employee. And for that, the third point comes in, the employees need to upskill, upskill themselves in the new era of AI, okay? Some more numbers, right? 76% of employees don't have enough time and energy to do their jobs currently. So we came out with tools which we thought would make employees productive, right? You've got emails, you've got chats, you've got what and what not, right? But the same tools have slowed the employees down, right? And so 76% feel, hey, I don't even have time and energy to do my job, okay? 67% of the leaders say lack of innovation is a concern. I mean, you don't have time, where will you innovate, right? 83% of the workers agree they don't have enough uninterrupted focus time. Anybody can ping you anytime, right? You've got teams, you've got outlook, you've got what and what not, right? So what came out of this entire numbers, if you have to summarize it, hey, you know what, there are great tools to make me productive, but these same tools are slowing me down in a lot of ways. And now we need to find a new way of work and that's what we call the future of work and the solution to that is AI, right? Some more numbers, okay. 57% of the employees spend time on communication, okay. They send emails, they have chats, they have meetings. And 43% time is spent on creation. Now, if you think of it, how do you grow your business? You grow your business when you have time to focus on the key ones that you need to move needle on, right? Hey, I, I, am a, I am a category lead. I should be creating something than emailing and getting into 500 meetings, right? Okay. Now, that's the time that AI is gonna, gonna bring us, right? With the co-pilots that we have, right? Some more numbers for you to read, but essentially the message is what I've already told you, right? Now, the, 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 obviously there are the multiple things on this slide, right? The, 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 the net of it is what leaders want from AI, right? Uh, leaders want, a manager want, or a company CEO wants the, the AI to be the co-pilot which makes your employee productive so that the mundane job, the data entering job can be moved to an AI powered tool and that same employee can be doing something else, right? That's how productivity grows, right? And so, so AI is, is already here, right? Uh, we've experienced AI in the past as well. Now we call that AI on autopilot, we didn't even know we were doing AI, right? The new face of AI with the generative AI, with the large language models, right? We, we call it AI on co-pilot, okay? I know it's a lot of information, but, but, but look, uh, and, and obviously we are, we, are available for, um, we are available for that discussion, but, but the point is, uh, in this room, I think you've got to, uh, uh, introspect and see are, are we ready for the age of AI? Do we are we skilled enough to ensure that we sell products which are AI enabled? If not, I think we all of us in this room have to take time to upskill ourselves to sell these products, right? Because this is where the market is going to be in the next not long away, next six months to one year, right? These are the products you're going to sell. That these are the products we're going to launch, right?